The purpose of this video is to share some of the Road to Referendum. This presentation was shared at the All District In Service on January 19th. As a member of our staff, you may already know that we are moving toward a referendum on April 7th. This referendum addresses our aging school buildings, changes we may need to make related to safety and security, our ever-increasing student enrollment and population changes, as well as endeavoring to have our buildings meet the educational needs of students looking forward into the future. Looking at the road to referendum, this has been one of the most powerful slides we've shared in the community. It shows the development and major renovations of each of our school buildings. As an example, Windsor Elementary School is shown in the golden color. It opened in 1912 and has had five major updates in more than 100 years of serving the community. You can examine each of the other buildings to see their history. In summary, we've shared that we don't come to the community often, but when we do, we're very thoughtful about the cost and the needs. The past two years have been a time of thorough examination and thoughtfulness. The board began analyzing the challenges in early 2013. They toured the buildings and commissioned a review of all district facilities as two of the initial steps. Although framework for our future is truly not about facilities, we did find that the community sent a strong message about taking a look at our buildings. The board continued its work of analyzing the financial state of the district, including a major refinancing in early 2014. By the end of the school year in 2014, the board felt ready to take next steps and encourage the community listening sessions and request volunteers to a community advisory committee. A mailing was sent to 7,800 of our households. This includes the entire district and all nine municipalities. The committee that was garnered began meeting in August of 2014. After many evenings of studying materials that they requested, as well as some important facets the board had studied, the Community Advisory Committee recommended a survey to test their base plan. Along with this, the district tested the community thinking on a pool and technical education questions. The survey was sent to all households within the district. The results of the survey were very positive, and the CAC was able to make a recommendation to the board just before winter break 2014. Coming back on January 5th, the board asked questions of the CAC and administration. Ultimately, they determined it was best to move forward with a question on the ballot for April 7th. Thank you to the Community Advisory Committee, who are pictured in part here for their work between August and December of 2014. The Community Advisory Committee was made up of a diverse cross-section of the community. Parents, staff, government officials, business partners, the school board, clergy, and community members with no students in school all participated actively in the committee. The committee consisted of 45 members. Over the course of the time together, the CAC studied and discussed many things. You can see some of the things they studied and discussed listed on this infographic. They examined the finances of the district, the previous facility study, special education services, modern learning environments, the Morrisonville Task Force study and recommendations, enrollment and population growth in the area, including housing starts, and they examine the guiding principles set forth by the school board. The question asked in the referendum is for $41 million. Answering yes on the ballot affirms the support of the referendum. Answering no on the ballot 
states that you are not in support of additional taxes for additional buildings and expenses related to equipping those buildings. The first part of the referendum question has to do with Eagle Point Elementary School. At the Eagle Point site, the referendum would rebuild a new Eagle Point at the current location. In addition, there are students who currently attend school in the lower level of the Holum Education Building. These students would move from the Holum Education Center to Eagle Point Elementary School. In addition to rebuilding Eagle Point Elementary School as part of the referendum, Windsor Elementary School would have a significant addition and renovation. This addition and renovation would turn the face of Windsor Elementary School to the east. On the east side of the property is already owned district property. This property is currently used as the high school's land laboratory. Taking a small part of that property and turning it into a parking lot will allow Windsor to face east and parents to drop off and pick up students on the east side of the building. This will alleviate significant traffic and safety concerns currently on Windsor Road, as well as provide a substantial addition and renovation to fit the needs of our students at Windsor Elementary School. At Yehara Elementary School, the referendum question includes significant renovations and updates for improved traffic flow and visitor controlled access. Along the west side of Yehara Elementary School, we are partnering with the Village of DeForest to create a drive that would allow some traffic to move through the west part of the lot. Again, like at Windsor Elementary School, this can alleviate some of the traffic safety concerns that are occurring around the building. In the case of Yehara Elementary School, this would alleviate some of the traffic from Lexington Parkway making a safer entrance and exit for students. In addition, the renovation and updates at Yehara would move the main office from the central part of the building to an exterior part of the building where greater control of visitors and a greater line of sight would be evident for the office. The initial base plan question, as shared with the community, through the community survey included elements related to Morrisonville Elementary School. At this time, the referendum question does not have anything related to Morrisonville Elementary School included in the question. We do anticipate that a Morrisonville Task Force 2 at some point will come together in the future. Morrisonville is not a part of the referendum question. We've talked about our elementary schools and the changes that could occur at Yehara, Windsor, and Eagle Point. But now we move on to the middle school and high school. Included in the referendum question is additional space and equipment to support improvements to the middle school and high school technology, agri-science, and science, technology, engineering, and math education programs. These are called STEM more commonly known as shop classes, but now advancing into the computer age, STEM programs offer students a wealth of opportunities. STEM coursework includes opportunities like pathways to engineering, biomedical sciences, computer science, and software engineering. These courses combined make up the acronym STEM. In addition, the district will keep traditional courses like small engines, welding, and woods. And, of course, we're going to continue to enhance our agri-science program. The work of the Community Advisory Committee and plans for each of the buildings, including STEM at the high school and middle school, was supported through an all-community survey. The survey was mailed to 7,800 households, or our entire district. 
The survey received a 24% response rate, and we know from the results that the majority of residents and staff support the plans. 74% supported the base plan. This included all of the ideas shared previously about elementary schools. 63% supported the STEM programming, and this includes what was shared in the previous two slides. The pool was also a question on the survey. Although it did not receive as favorable a response, it did work to share a lot of information with our community about the 45-year-old pool. There is still a lot of support for the pool being examined as a joint effort with other entities, and the school district is moving forward with that. If you'd like more information on anything you've heard so far, or more background on the Community Advisory Committee or the Community Survey, please know that we are very transparent. Our district website includes a tremendous amount of information for you to review. And should you have any questions, you can pose them to the Office of the Superintendent or any of your school board members. Having heard all the information about what's in the referendum, you may wonder what are some of the next steps. In January through February, design teams will meet to develop initial conceptual drawings to share with staff and the public. In February through April, there will be a great deal of information given to the staff and public through staff meetings, public input sessions, display boards, direct mailings, and the website. The goal of this information is to ensure our voters have every piece of information they need. Also during that time, the design work will continue. With the vote on April 7th, we would of course continue this design work if the community affirms the need for these facilities. <laughs>